Hey everyone, my name is Brian Matias, and I'm the Curriculum and Education Manager at On One Software. I want to thank Ron for giving me the opportunity to show you how the Perfect Photo Suite can help you kind of boost the look of your image, boost the feel of your image. Now, I'm going to jump into Lightroom right here, and I'm going to show you these are nine bracketed exposures that I took for HDR purposes or high dynamic range. So the first thing that I would do is I want to show you the several brackets. So here we are. These are the exposures that are trying to get the highlight information or the brighter parts of the scene. And you can see that as I scroll through, we're starting to get more mid-tone information. And then we get into the shadow areas, the darker parts of the image. So what HDR allows us to do is combine or tone map multiple exposures so that we can get at a pixel by pixel basis a true representation or as true as we can get and it far exceeds what a single exposure of most modern digital cameras can capture. So here is the tone mapped image that I already took. I just took, did this in advance so that we wouldn't have to waste time and what I'd like to do now is show you how we can use photo tools and focal point to really change the look of the image. So right from within Lightroom, I'm going to access Photo Tools by going to File, Plugin Extras, and then selecting Photo Tools. With the dialog box that comes up, I'm going to select Edit a copy of the file with Lightroom adjustments, which there aren't any. The file format is going to be TIFF for my purposes. I use the Profoto RGB color space in Lightroom, so I'm going to stick with that. And just for demonstration purposes, I'll be at 8-bit and I'm going to use um, Photoshop CS5 because Photo Tools currently requires Photoshop CS5 as opposed to most of our other products which you can use as a standalone. I'm also going to select the stack with original so that it, I know exactly where it will appear when I save it. When I'm done with these settings I'll just hit open and it will automatically launch the Photo Tools interface. For those of you that may not be familiar with Photo Tools it's a collection of over 300 different effects that you can either use to stylize or correct your images. And it's one of my favorite products in the Perfect Photo Suite family. Now you'll see that the categories are broken down right here under this categories palette. And then under each category you will have the effects that we have stored. Now for me and my purposes, my favorite category is stylized effects. Uh, this is where you'll find some of the more creative effects that will really change the look of your image. And I'm going to apply some effects in a certain order and show you the different ways that you can utilize them. So in the first case, what I usually do is the first effect that I apply is the one that will kind of affect the entire image or most of the image. And in this case here, there's an effect that is called Thermopylae. It's towards the bottom of the list, which is alphabetical. I'm going to select the effect. You'll see that you'll get the name, who created it, as well as a brief description. And you can have a preview. You can either have a split preview a before preview or an after preview. You can also increase or decrease the size of this palette just by tugging at those three little lines on the right here. To apply an effect you can either double click on the name or you can hit add to stack and it'll bring the effect into the stack palette right here. When an effect is applied it's usually applied somewhere between 70 and 100 percent strength as indicated by this fade slider. So if I drop the fade slider to zero none of the effect will be applied and if I bring it to a hundred the full strength of that effect is applied. So what I like to do is whenever I apply an effect I always drop it to zero and I just bring it up slowly until I get to a point where I'm happy. So here about 60 percent is the strength that I'm happy with. Next I want to apply an effect that will change the color cast specifically on the windows and there's a cool effect called urban sickness that is new to Photo Tools 2.6. I'm going to hit add to stack. Now this will add to the entire image here. Now the thing is I only want it to apply to the windows. So first I'm going to adjust the fade slider to get the effect to the desired strength. Next I'm going to hit this button under the masking palette called invert mask. And what that essentially does is it hides the effect. Uh, it's not removed it's just hidden. This allows me to take my masking brush, which is at the bottom toolbar over here, and then change the mode of the masking brush from paint out to paint in by clicking on it. Now notice I've got my Wacom Controls Opacity checkbox selected. I'm currently using a Wacom Intuos 4 tablet. So by, with my opacity at 100%, which is essentially the strength of the brush, the softer I press, 
the lower the opacity the brush will have, and that's great for when you're painting along edges. Um, but when I'm in the middle here, I can just press down hard and paint out or paint in in full opacity. So I'm just going to adjust my brush here, and I'm going to mask this in. And you can see how by painting in, the effect is being applied exactly where I want it. And this is an important lesson when you're working with photo tools, is that you do not need to just take all of the effects at face value. You can specify exactly where the effect will be applied by using these masking controls. Um, and if you want, you could have had the entire effect applied to the image and then paint it out. But because the effect is being applied to a minority of the image, I'd rather just hide it and paint it in where I need it. Now, you'll notice that the windows are reflected in this puddle over here. So you want to be consistent with your image and paint the effect in on this reflection as well. This will register with the viewer this kind of uh, visual consistency that you, the color that you have, this cast here, is also being applied um, in combination with the water reflection. To me, that is one of the wonderful things when I find a photographer who shares his or her work and you can see little things like this. Um, it's something that I've just become used to looking for um, is whether or not that kind of consistency. And you can see how it's not the most interesting thing. It's a pretty tedious process kind of drawing around here, making sure you get every little nook and cranny, but it pays off with dividends uh, at the end when all is said and done. So I'm just painting over here, making sure I try to get everything. Notice also on the right with the opacity slider, how it's kind of adjusting. As I get to the edges, I kind of lessen the, the uh, pressure, but when I'm in the middle, I kind of press down hard and that affects the opacity directly. You can also see your mask. If you go to the show mask button, you can see what you painted here. Now, the different shades of gray to white uh, indicates the sensitivity or the pressure. I can see here that I missed a little piece here, but if I hide my mask, that's because I remember there was this gap over here in the window, so I didn't want to paint over it. Now, the final effect that I'm going to apply um, will be Blue Dawn Leonidas. And I like what it does to the overall look of the brick here. So let me add it to the stack. And when it comes in, you see it comes in at 75%, but that's a bit strong. So I'm going to drop it down to zero, and I'm going to bring it up just a tiny bit. Now, I'm going to invert the mask again. I especially like what it does to the darker parts of the water here. It kind of really gives it that kind of slick, uh, black, oily look. So I'm just painting that in over here uh, just to really, really deepen it. And you can see how even with uh, an effect as powerful as Blue Dawn Leonidas, which is probably my favorite effect in uh, Photo Tools, I'm really only applying it to certain areas. A lot of times when I apply an effect, uh, I look for the changes that that effect, ha uh, that effect rather has on each element within the scene. So I'm looking at what it did to the windows, what it does to the brick, and what it did to the water specifically. And at first I thought I was just going to apply it to the brick, but in hindsight I'm like, you know what? I think this will look a lot better uh, on the water. I could just in very, very small amounts just brush it on the kind of this bottom part of the brick because I did like what it did there. And you can see how I'm just kind of doing it very softly. Um, just to have that look applied. I don't need to do it that hard, but I am trying to be consistent and get it on any area uh, of this wall that has that same uniform color. Okay, so now uh, what we can do is we can hit none here to hide the entire control palette. Then we can go to view and then fit to screen so we can get a full size look. And then I like to toggle the before and the after with this checkbox down here to see the progress we made. So I'm just going to hit apply and let Photo Tools render the changes right now. And now if we go to the grid view, you can see that we have our Photo Tools affected image. But for me, I really want to draw focus down to the puddle down here. And there's a product in the Perfect Photo Suite family called Focal Point that will do an amazing job at this. Now I'm going to access Focal Point again by going to File, Plug in Extras, and then going to Focal Point 2. In the dialog box, I'm going to keep the same settings except I'm going to use Standalone as opposed to Photoshop CS5. 
This will let me launch Focal Point as its own product and it's pretty snappy. So I'm gonna hit open to launch this image in Focal Point. And so here we are in Focal Point. The heart of Focal Point is the focus bug, this little critter right here. Anywhere you position the bug, uh, inside the confines of it will be in focus and anything outside will be rendered out of focus. And you can control the size and the shape and the orientation as well just by tugging at its legs. The legs are the lines with the solid ends. There are also antennas which are signified by lines with hollow ends. The antennas control certain sliders, but personally, I prefer using the sliders themselves as opposed to just dragging these antennas here. Now, you'll notice that the body of the bug is round, as indicated by this circle. For me though, I want to create a new shallow plane of focus. To do that, I'm going to change the shape over here from round to planar, and you'll notice that the bug now went from a circle to a square. I can also, again, adjust the size, the shape, and the orientation by tugging at the legs, and this time I'm going to put the focus bug horizontally and position it down here uh, on the lower part of the image. So right off the bat you can see where I'm going with this image here. We now have a shallow depth of field. I can make it even more shallow by dropping down the focus bug. Now a few things first. The first thing I want to do is I want to drop the amount of blur because this is an unrealistic amount of blur. I'm going to drop that amount pretty low. I don't need it to be totally blurred out. I want you to register that there are windows out there. So I'm going to drop it to about 7, and that's great. The other thing that I want to do is I want to change the tilt of this plane of focus. Now to do this, it's kind of important that you pay attention. The cursor of your mouse or your tablet has to be inside the body of the bug, so anywhere in the square or circle. You then want to press the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC and drag up or down. You can see how we're tilting that plane of focus. Now I can reposition my focus bug. I think I'm going to bring up a little bit of the blur from 7 to 10 now. I'm also going to show my mask to see that I have a slight amount of blur in the foreground which I don't want. I can fix that pretty easily just by selecting my focus brush. I'll make sure that I'm in paint focus and I can just paint in the focus right here. Just making sure that I have all of that snapped in. Now I'm going to hide the mask to see the original image. To further draw attention down, I can also drop the brightness by using the brightness slider over here, and that's only going to affect the out of focus areas, it's not going to touch the in focus areas. I can also boost the contrast, so you can see how your eye is starting to get drawn down, because the way the eye works is it will first pay attention to things that are in focus and things that are bright. So now I can also use a classic burning of edges, otherwise known as vignetting. I'm going to turn off this vignette follows focus bug because otherwise the vignette will follow the actual focus bug. By turning it off it's just going to burn the edges evenly. And so I'm also going to make it a little bit more centered by using the midpoint slider. And so you can see here this was our original image without focal point and then this is what we were able to get. We really concentrate the eye right around here the best part of the image. When I'm done I'll just hit apply to return back to Lightroom. And now if we go into the grid view, there's our new image. So let's take a quick walk through. Here was our tone map image that we, you know, we brought all the good tonal information. We were able to see that there are windows here that are covered in plastic uh, as well as all the darker details in the foreground. And then we applied some creativity using photo tools. And then finally we were able to adjust the plane of focus and draw the eye exactly where we want it using focal point. And those are just two out of the seven products in the Perfect Photo Suite family. Again, I'd like to thank Ron for giving me the opportunity to share some tips on how I use the Perfect Photo Suite to boost the creativity and look of my images. And I hope you got a lot out of it. Thanks a lot.